Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 133 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Well, let's get right to it. This one's called Thank You Letter. Dear Mr. Sargent, thank you so much for talking to our class today. I honestly am kind of swayed towards the flat earth through your discussion with us. If there is any way to have further conversations with you, please let me know. I'd love to speak more on the topic with you. Thank you, Jordan. And that was from a high school in um, Pennsylvania that I spoke with recently. And he says, P.S. Did you say an XL for the t-shirt? Yes, I did. Uh, in fact, that class, it was interesting. You didn't see it. Uh, in fact, we didn't even record the audio for it because they, we did it through Google, ha Google Hangouts. But... Uh, eight of the, the class members actually had custom-made uh, We Are Mark Sargent t-shirts, which was really cool, with black with teal lettering, so it was kind of tough to see, but I was I was very flattered. That was awesome. awesome. Anyway, so Jordan, if you're listening to this, thank you very much, man. This one's called Flat Earth Google Hangout. Hi, Mark. Thanks for the Google Hangout this morning. This is from the teacher, Diana. My students and I really enjoyed the discourse and learning about the Flat Earth beliefs. We will send a t-shirt along to you as well as a group picture. I wanted to let you know that a student watching from another classroom commented me uh, to what a good ambassador you are for Flat Earth Believers. She said it was great how nice you were to our students. Thanks again, Diana Cole. That is super awesome, Diana. Thank you for that. This one's called Earth Atmosphere Extends Beyond the Moon. Feel free to read out, out online, but don't mention my full name. All right, I won't. Hi, Mark. Greetings from Sweden. I'm actually Austrian, but fell for a Swedish woman while I was working in London five years ago. She doesn't know I'm a flat earther, but with the beauty of technology these days, you are plugged into your headphones and your partner can't tell if you're listening to Mark Sargent or Britney Spears. Interesting comparison. I stumbled upon Matt Boylan and then your Strange World show way back in 2014 when I was doing a late night coding session and have been stuck in the flat earth rabbit hole ever since. It has been very interesting to see how things have evolved since then, I'm surprised your subject matter expert testimonies haven't gained the momentum or traction they deserve. I was recently reading scientists have announced the moon is within our atmosphere. This has got to be a slap in the face to the science community and more fuel to the fire for flat earthers. It's strange there hasn't been much media coverage or attention around this at all. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, any plans for being a guest on Joe Rogan's podcast? I'm sure his mate, Eddie Bravo, would appreciate it. Keep up the great work. Best regards, John. No, uh, Joe Rogan wouldn't dare bring on a flat earther. Uh, in fact, he tried at one point, he tried to do Eric Dubay and Neil deGrasse Tyson at the same time. And the only reason he was going to bring Eric Dubay in was so that he could have somebody uh, that, that Neil deGrasse Tyson was going to go after him. But Neil backed out. Because he doesn't do debates. And uh, I, I was really surprised that Joe even put him on the schedule because Neil deGrasse Tyson has never debated anyone in his life. He is merely a spokesperson for uh, the science community. That's all he does is he goes around to universities all around the country. And he's the same thing every time, which is space is amazing. He's literally just a crank up jack in the box. This one's called, I've seen your videos on Flat Earth. Well, Mark, needless to say, I see you've done a lot of research on this topic. I it wasn't up until probably about a year and a half ago when I was experimenting with a hallucinogenic drug that happened to notice outside in the sky that there were these large hexagons that all seemed to connect with one another, creating a dome over the sky itself. I've been always pretty intellectual and trying to find out the truth about a lot of the topics that the government has withheld from the people, including the shape of the earth. That being said, I would like to ask you whether or not you think it's not plausible that I should have or could have witnessed this firmament or dome while under the influence of a, of a hallucinogenic drug because it's in my personal perspective. These hexagons, which were invisible clearly to the naked eye, all seem to connect with one another across the sky in a dome-shaped manner. And I was not the only one who witnessed this. I will also add that I'm a Bible-believing Christian who believes that God created the earth and then the celestial objects. After the earth's creation, I also believe that he did create the firmament. But from my previous understanding of how the earth had an atmosphere, that's what I believed it was. After reviewing your videos and seeing how much evidence is stacked up against the opposite side of the global uh, earth theory, I am now starting to believe more that the earth is flat and was created for human beings and that everyone revolves around the earth. Uh, it, I'm sorry, everything revolves around the earth itself and that this is just a primary example of the desolated garden of Eden after the flood. Hmm. 
I'd really appreciate if you replied if you think that it's possible through hallucinogenic drugs that we are able to physically observe this so-called dome or firmament. I will also add that in the middle of the night when I was also hallucinating on these drugs, he really mentions this a lot, doesn't he? That I could see all the stars connecting with one another through almost an invisible light. A lot of people would just tell me that I was hallucinating. But there have been plenty of spiritual experiences as well as physical observations that I've made to say that there is some type of geometry and trigonometry and misunderstood physics are about the world. Uh, and that's from Jake. Uh, yeah, I, no, I actually wrote him back and I said, yeah, of course it's possible. Sure. I mean, you know, our body chemistry and, you know, the, the brain is just an electrochemical computer. So is it possible that the filters can be sort of tweaked when you're doing hallucinogenic drugs? Possibly, sure. Lots of people have reported it, especially on DMT, which is what he might... I mean, he didn't mention it by name, but that could have been what he was on. This one's called Curvature. Uh, Mark, I have an idea for finding out whether we live on a flat plane. Take a train journey across your country, east to west or north to south. Take with you on that journey an inclin inclinometer or an altimeter, a spirit level, a small gyroscope, and video recording equipment. We have been told by experts that rail rays are surveyed on a flat plane, so if this is correct, then it should be quite easy to verify. This journey should be no less than 2,000 kilometers as an appropriate sample size. Please feel free to shoot this idea full of holes. For an example, journey in Australia, we have a train journey that goes from Sydney on the east coast to Perth on the west coast. That is approximately 4,000 kilometers long. Wow, that must take a long time. Uh, stay flat, Greg. Uh, Thomas from the Sunshine Coast, Queensland, Australia. Yeah, I like it. I like that idea. Um, you might want to also elaborate if you if you listen to this on exactly what you were hoping the, those uh, instruments would show, and what what you would expect, and what the the globalist would ex would expect. So uh, this one's called "Slowly Waking Up." Hi, Mark. First saw you on the Nat Geo story and thought you guys were nuts, but you and the others in the community say something like, "Don't believe me. Do your own research." I now think any reasonable person spending a few hours will find themselves in a cognitive dissonance situation. My path was studying World War II history, then finding Admiral Byrd, then the moon landing, then Flat Earth, and now I'm starting to see how it's all connected. Thanks for what you do for the community. Please send me the survival guide. You frequently mention that's from Jim. Did I actually write him back? No, I did not. And so I have not sent him the survival guide. Guys, if you want the survival guide, put it somewhere in the top. Because if I don't read it till the very end, you know, then you're going to have to wait till I get through an email show before I send it to you. Just saying. It's not a rookie mistake, but it, it would help. Uh, this one's called uh, A Picture of the Torque Earth. Yep. Uh, and that's from Mike Prokopow, P-R-O-K-O-P-O-W. He sent me some screenshots of uh, some Flat Earth memorabilia on top of his uh, beautifully decorated coffee table. So very cool. Thank you for that. I use, I, you guys can send me as many images as you want. I will try to use them in thumbnails if I haven't used it, uh, something like it before. This one's called Hi Mark, smiley face and um, thumbs up. Hello Mark, on, on time, no talk. Wow, that's your first line. How are you doing? This is Tina. We spoke a long time ago when you first released Flat Earth Clues. I've been waking people up to the flat earth all this time, been some ups and downs, but I don't let that bother me. When you know the truth, you just know. I just watched the video. I'm not going to click on the link right now. I feel like there's a lot of information that's been left out. Is that correct? Why couldn't the flag just be pulled up with a telescope? Oh yeah, the Nat Geo video. Uh, I'm working directly with the owner and founder of C Team Coin, which is the Christian team coin. He's not Christian, but... We'll have, time, we'll have to explain the reason for the name sometime with the 1776 coin. We've got quite an organization growing. We've started a freedom movement called Freedom Social. I would love for you to join us. Okay, and uh, blah, blah, blah. You would be a welcome member to our group, and I think I could get Kent to start a forum just for the Flat Earth alone. We could have you do some online speaking engagements if you want. There's already over 27,000 members. We're shooting for millions. Please get back to me ASAP. Uh, and I will set up a call. That's from Tina Cox. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe. I'll take a look. This one's called Following Up to Classroom Interview. 
Mark, thanks you for getting back to me. I appreciate it. Those sources are very interesting. And while the Apollo photo may have an inconsistency here or there, I only found two, I don't necessarily make the claim that it's real or fake in the first place. You do have some interesting things to consider, but I think my tendency to fall back on Occam's razor has me this, uh, has me this time. Uh, what has already been established just makes more sense to me. However, it is impossible to know what truly is or isn't, so I'll agree to disagree. Thanks again for coming to speak to the class. It was definitely a fun change of pace for us all. That's from Caden. Uh, and yeah, she was part of the classroom. N not all the people in the classroom actually believed in Flat Earth. Uh, and, and there were a number of skeptics. So, hey, why not? This one's called Flat Earth Mountain Air. Hello, Mark. I'm a flat earther for two years now. It took me a week to wrap my head around the idea. Everything came clear when all the pieces of the puzzle came together. I have one problem I can't explain. If gravity is a theory, how can we explain the fact that there is less air to breathe on a mountaintop. I have a couple of friends that have climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. If there is less air as we go up in the sky, can this mean that there could be sort of vacuum space after all? Any thoughts? Keep up the great work. And that's from Martin. Uh, no, no. As a matter of fact, the, the problem is when you get to the vacuum of space, yes, air pressure, it gets thinner as you get higher, but you could say you could do the very same thing in an enclosed system, uh, an enclosed greenhouse, a planetarium, a terrarium. Which is, you know, the air pushes down from from the top down. So it would be no different than water pressure. I mean, water is a little tougher to compress, obviously, but we do have a higher water pressure, or say, uh, more dense water pressure as you as you get lower. So no, no, the the problem is when you get to the vacuum of space. Where does and so I throw the question back at you. Where does the atmosphere end and the vacuum of space begin? And that is, uh, our world seems to defy uh, one of the laws of thermodynamics, which is pressure needs a container. Where is the container around the Earth? Gravity is not a container. It is not. No way, sh shape, or form. And I'll give you the quick, t uh, something I, I mentioned in an interview yesterday, which was, okay, imagine this. You're in a two-story building. You're on the ground floor, right? And you're breathing normally. Everything in the ground floor is just as it is right now. And you, on the second floor, you turn that into a giant vacuum chamber. And then you punch a hole in the ceiling. What do you think is going to happen? That air is going to equalize instantly, violently. So my question to you is, if gravity is holding down the atmosphere that is your breathing right now, why does the air just, ru why does it rush up into the second floor? Why doesn't gravity keep it exactly where it is? Because that's what we're talking about here. Why doesn't it do that? And if you want to do a challenge to that, by all means, you know, set up a box, two box, two box stack system where the one box has air and the, the box above you has a, uh, has a vacuum chamber in it. It will always work that way. Always, always, always. Gravity is not strong enough to fight a vacuum. It isn't. Moving on. This one's called Damning. NASA Orion re-entry without fisheye lens. Best evidence is their own. Hi, Mark. Hope this makes it to the Q&A. Just found this, and it's quite a damning for the Globe Crew YouTube channel. Tanks in Space claim it is a NASA re-entry that took place in 2014. The whole video is without fisheye, and I must say, it's pretty damn flat. They claim it as an Orion mission that completed two orbits and then back to Earth on December 14. It looks more like a pendulum motion under a balloon. It's definitely higher than the amateur crowd, which leads me to believe that it's actually NASA, but doesn't prove space or a globe. Check it out and let me know your thoughts. Uh, hope you share this in the next Q&A. And that's from Scott Leckie from Newfoundland. And yeah, it's a YouTube video called Full Onboard Re-Entry into Earth's Atmosphere, New NASA Spacecraft. You know what? I am definitely going to watch that thing and send it around to a few people. This one's called Thank You. Dear Mark, please ignore the troll-like email address. <laughs> yeah, that is a troll email address. I was young, 16, and thought it was funny, but over the years, I just got tied to so many accounts, it's impossible to change it now, and I'm 28 years old. Uh, me does not think it's funny anymore. Oh, well, life goes on. Thank you for your work you are putting into the community. I watched Behind the Curve a few weeks ago, and as you have stated in so many interviews, uh, Flat Earth and other hot potatoes and Q&A videos that it did in fact pique my curiosity and now I believe I'm a flat earther. It makes sense on many levels as you have outlined in your clues and other community members who are pulling out or putting out content. I look forward to any meetups coming to my area and love the secret show you and Patricia, uh, she is so hot in parentheses. Let her know I live in Houston, <laughs> winky face. 
Uh, keep it up, and I look forward to more content and videos. Regards, Arthur. And yes, you know what? I will, hopefully Patricia is listening. She hears that a lot. Well, come on, she is ridiculously good looking. And for fifty six, find me another fifty six year old that looks anywhere close to what she looks. Hell, find me a twenty year old that looks like she does. Um. Anyway, so yeah, Houston meetups. Yeah, they happen. Um, I don't know how often they happen, but they do happen. So yeah, the next one that's in Houston, I am sure we will. Plus, well, you've got to remember also the uh, national conference, the U.S. national conference, is going to be in Dallas this year. So definitely make it to that. And uh, I, I've got to read because you guys are probably going to ask me. It's like, what was his email address? And and yeah, when you're 16, maybe you thought that horsecock369 is funny. Oh, good Lord. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth New NASA Moon Lies 2019. Dear Mark, my fiance and I watch your videos pretty much daily since watching the Netflix documentary. We both really enjoy listening to you and have a great, you have a great speaking voice and you always stay calm and humble. The other night I came across a video from YouTuber Richie from Boston in which he talked about NASA coming out with new claims. The moon is actually inside Earth's atmosphere. Have you seen this video? I will link it below. Also, what do you think about extraterrestrials and how they can get in and out of the dome firmament, or did they just exist inside uh, or outside of out visible of our visible light spectrum? It could be either. Honestly, that's that's one of the big questions: is uh, the other civilizations that are in here with us, do they have access to to leave, or are they stuck in here with us? I don't know. I don't know. I'm dying to know if I can find out. I mean that. Of course, knowing would probably give you some tips to how this place was built and why it was built. Uh, I believe the high-definition cameras of today have been causing a lot of problems with trying to keep up uh, old deceptions. I really think that a lot of people do not realize that what visual perception is. I have a high level of visual perception because I have OCD and see things differently than other people. I really love that you take emails live on air, and I hope I get a response from you. P.S. You should come to Buffalo. Thanks, K and K from Buffalo, New York. And you know what? I am going to read this, uh, or I'm going to let them know what what show this is on. One thirty three. So I'll put that to my to do pile. And thank you for writing. I mean, again, I can't answer all the emails, and ever honestly, ever since the Netflix thing, I'm never going to be able to get them all. So I, I have to be really picky about what I what I read nowadays. So they're any if it's really long, I'm not going to read it. I just can't. There's just not enough time. Um, this one's called question about high tide and low tide. Hello, Mark Sargent. Can you explain high tide and low tide since the earth is flat? I'm new to the flat earth reality and I just started my own research about four months ago. I was directed to your site by someone who attends the flat earth meetup here in Eugene, Oregon. I just finished watching no forest on flat earth. Any thoughts on this movie? Judy, a new flat earther. Uh, two things. She has two questions there. First off, uh, high tide and low tide. It is, it, it, if the moon is really, really tiny, the last thing you would do in any sort of structure like this is create a massive gravitational force from the moon. So no, the moon is not controlling the tides. Now, it, it's still a clock system up there with the sun and the moon and the stars and the planets. So the moon is synced up in its cycles to the tides, but it is not, uh, is not controlling the tides. The tides would be controlled from down below along with the gravitational forces that are down here. I do believe in some sort of gravity force, some sort of physics engine, and it's way easier to control the bodies of water from below than it is above. That's how I would build it. That's what I'm sticking to. Oh yeah, and sorry, uh, no forest on flat earth. Very interesting concept, which is, uh, did the early versions of this world, were they giant? And that would make sense because we make, you know, art imitates life and life imitates life. We make things smaller and smaller and smaller. Think of our old electronics. Our old electronics used to be huge. Our computers used to be the size of, of houses. And now we've shrunk them down to the palm of your hand. We have more computer power in the palm of your hand than we used to have in literally entire buildings full of, of computers. So did the, you know, when whoever built this world, whether it be an advanced civilization or God, did he start out with big, big things, uh, you know, big trees and big lizards and all that stuff and just start shrinking them down and making them smaller and smaller. That's what I think. This one's called, is this you? Uh, are you planning a trip to Antarctica? Adam. And it is a link to a, oh, the Daily Mail. They might be in for a surprise. Flat Earthers are planning a trip to Antarctica to reach the end of the world. No, this is not us. Uh, that story just got spread. It was. It started mostly because of the 2020 cruise, which was going to be a recreational cruise that was going to have the conference on it next year. Uh, this year's conference is in Dallas, and next year it was going to be out of Miami where they were going to just go off in a boat. 
And um, I don't remember, somebody just, uh, I can't remember the initial person, I think it was out of the UK though, when they said, oh yeah, well they, they should they should turn it into an expedition to the end of the world. And next thing you know, because media steals from each other so many times, all of a sudden they came out and said, oh yeah, well they're definitely going to Antarctica. And then the Logan Paul thing got tied to it. Uh, and then another producer out of um, London got tied to it. And so it was just, it became this grapevine story, which was, no, no, we were never going to Antarctica. The Antarctic Treaty, which we've been talking about for years, wouldn't allow that sort of thing. And even if you did take a cruise ship, you, you'd never take a cruise ship to Antarctica anyway because of the, of the icebergs. You'd have to take an icebreaker. So anyway, it's silly. This one's called Stanley Fat Max Pro Scaffold Spirit Levels. Uh, hi, Mark. You're going to fly to New Zealand. Take a spirit level on the plane. Uh, all the best, Eric. And yeah, I am going to the Flat Earth Conference, which is going to be in New Zealand in just a little less than a month. So I will be flying down there, and Patricia's going down, and Robbie Davidson, and a few other people. This one's called Your Prolific Content. Greetings, Mark. This is my first email to you. Been flat since January of 2018. I listen to all your Q&As. They are great. Love your voice in reading them, as well as your direct answers, quips, sarcasm, and grammar spelling corrections. It's thoroughly entertaining and a nice way to end my day. My question is, with such prolific content, how many hours per week do you work? Uh, between creating YouTube content, answering emails, taking calls, conducting interviews, and traveling to conferences, it seems like you would have to be putting in at least 80 hours or more. Do you have staff that assists? I would love to get a copy of your survival guide. Keep up the great work. I'm looking forward to meeting you one day. Thanks for all you do, uh, Angel McCormick. And I did not write him back, but I will send him the survival guide. But the answer to the question is, uh, I, yeah, I am nailed to this machine a lot. I, this is what I do. This is my job. Uh, I do this all day. I look at, uh, and by the way, the flat earth filters are back up and running. So that really helps. Uh, but yeah, I look at YouTube content and flat earth stories on Google and, uh, and answer interviews and do all everything he just said. That's what I do all the time. And it's been getting a lot more hectic as of late. This one's called Netflix Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I don't know if you already saw this. Netflix Sex Education Season 1 Episode 7 with 1440 left in the show. Be well, John. No, I have not seen it, but I will check it out if I get a chance. I don't have Netflix. I'm one of the few people that don't, but I will check it out. This one's called International Flat Earth. Mark, I hope your trip to Auckland was fantastic. What are the other countries hosting Flat Earth conferences? Thanks, Doris. And uh, she interviewed me. She was from, uh, I think, uh, was it um, uh, University of California, Irvine, if I'm not mistaken. She, we did a, a story recently, and she went to the, one of the Flat Earth conferences down in Los Angeles. Uh, no, I haven't got back. From, uh, no, the Auckland thing is until April. So I'll read, off, read them off real fast, which is the New Zealand conference. I'm going down there uh, April 24th. And the Calgary conference, I'm heading down there May 18th. And then... There's three conferences. I got the summer off for documentaries and other things. And then UK conference is uh, September 13th. I'm, well, I'm heading out there September 13th. Mount Shasta, California. I'm heading, I've, I've got to be there by the 18th. The Amsterdam conference, which I haven't been officially invited to yet, uh, which is going to be the last week of September. And then, of course, the, the Dallas conference is going to be in November. So there you go. This one's called Flat Earth Meeting. Hi, Mark. I would like to know when you are going to have the next meeting on Flat Earth in Florida. I live in Davie. Would you would like to comment on that also? Please let me know. Thanks. Uh, I don't I don't know. Uh, I mean, anyone that's going to do a meetup, uh, by all means, uh, send me the promo. Or if you want me to make a promo, I'll, I will try, If although I'm having less and less time to do that. Uh, but I don't know when the next one's going to be in Florida. This one's called The Reason Why. Hello, Mark. So I got a late start to Flat Earth, and I'm only about 40 episodes into Strange World. In that episode, the question is posed as to why Flat Earth is showing recommended on YouTube. Perhaps it is to prepare the masses for when the Antarctic Treaty has reached its end. Perhaps at that time, the veil will drop and the masses will be ready for the information. Just the thoughts of a working man. That's from David. Uh, new note, because the Antarctic Treaty isn't even up for debate until 2041. That's way too far out there. That's 20 years, 20, 20 plus years. So no, the, it's not going to not gonna have to wait that long. This is called regarding the, the Earth's rotation speed. 
Uh, Mark, check this out. This is an excerpt of a conversation I had in the YouTube comments section from a Flat Earth video. The RE claim that at the equator, the Earth is rotating a thousand miles an hour, but in North America, as you further move away from the equator is moving much slower. I don't know if you've heard of this claim, but to say that it's ridiculous because if it's only moving at 700 miles an hour, 300% slower in North America than at the equator, the sun would be would rise 30% slower or eight hours slower. But the time zones prove it's not correct. Uh, I've heard this, but I don't, I, I can't comment. I just don't know enough about this, this concept. I don't think that's exactly true true uh the because you can you can because the time zones can work can't eh, you know what i'm not even gonna comment on this i don't know somebody else throw me a, a comment on it but it's an interesting uh theory this one's called fire station 40c meetup in dallas texas mark is it possible to make a meetup in dallas after or before the convention in dallas to visit fire station 40 in dallas you should say Dallas a few more times. I will love for you and to Patricia to visit anyone that wants to join. You are more than welcome to visit. Please come and meet my firefighter friend and talk about Flat Earth. I am Oliver, a Dallas firefighter at Station 40, Shift C. You know what? Real super great. But look, if you're in Dallas, why aren't you coming to the conference? Uh, that, I mean, first off, I love his request, even though it's March and the conference isn't until November. But if you're in Dallas... Come, come and bring your friend to the conference. I, I think it'd be, I think it'd be fun. This one's called "A Few Genuine Questions About the Flat Earth Theory." Uh, a little too long, I think. Uh, a little too long. I'm not going to read that one right now. I'm sorry. I just got to be a little more picky because there's just too much, too much stuff coming at me. Uh, this one's called. Oh boy, this is the beginning of. Yeah, I knew this was going to happen, and that is the um, the Logan Paul response videos. Okay, so this is going to be the beginning of a whole bunch of Logan Paul response emails, which is fine. We'll get them out of the way and we won't have to ever hear them again, but these are what people are saying to me. Uh, this one's called, I just watched Logan's video right now. You, you are thinking, dot, dot, dot. Uh, hey, Mark, I just got done watching the hilarious troll piece. I would say right about now you were thinking that leaving early in Denver was the smartest decision you have ever made. Let people make fun of you for behind the curve because you can proudly say that you are not in a single frame of this elaborate internet troll hit piece. The community got punked hard, you called it, so it was all a scripted scam from the start. The best friend, the fake hot chick actress, uh, how the Robbie interview was going to be used, and the onstage uh, outing monologue. I just skimmed the comments of the video and everyone that was against Logan in the preview is praising him for the best troll ever. I don't think is even worth the time to wage... The good fight in those comments. I'm guessing Robbie D is now thinking, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Never again. That's from Bill. Yeah, thanks, Bill, uh, for, for that. And you're absolutely right. Uh, it was it was a brutal troll piece. And uh, this one's from Alex L. Uh, it's called It's Happening. It is, which means the, the Logan Paul piece had just dropped. Uh, this one's called I'm Still Laughing. <clears throat> Um, hi Mark, read on Strange World if you want. Hey Mark, just watched uh, Logan Paul's Flat Earth documentary. I hope you practiced your I told you so speech. Still shaking my head. Smells like something subversive is up in the Flat Earth community. Should be very interesting over the next few days. And that's from Reggie. Thank you for that. This one's called Logan's Hit Piece. Uh, Mark, you were so right. That was like a kick to the gut. I hope Robbie takes note for the future. That's from Belinda. Yep. This one's called Logan. I mean, I got a bunch of these. This one's called Logan Paul's Flat Earth to the Edge and Back. Hi, Mark. I just watched the mockumentary. It was pretty horrible. I'd expect it to be funny, but it had way too many missed opportunities. Yeah, I agree. It could have been way better. I taught, he had so many openings that he should have taken, and he didn't because he's just a simpleton. I mean, seriously, the kid has no brain cells at all. Uh, it was 50 minutes of pure boredom. If people want to see a funny mockumentary, just watch the evolution presentation made by the show, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Now that's four and a half minutes of pure comedic genius. Logan Paul's crew is like a PG-13 version of the Jackass crew with Johnny Knoxville, but without the hilarity. I don't know how that fella has 18 million subscribers. He doesn't. He bought a bunch of them. Uh, at any rate, good call on skipping out on the Flat Earth Conference when you saw Logan Paul there. I would have done the same thing. You were one smart fellow, Mark. Thank you, Evan Kim. Yeah, uh, it was 
yeah, it's just terrible. Yeah, and and Logan Paul, the, the how he made his fame and money is he took the the the. I feel bad because it's um uh, Johnny Knoxville, uh, from Jackass, the the Jackass crew, which you know went through you know part of the '90s and into the 2000s. Uh, they quit. You know, they did three major movies in in theaters, and they quit just before YouTube fired up. And had they hung around a little longer, I think they, I mean, not that they needed to do it anymore. They were getting older, but that that's what happened. It, uh, Logan just took the jackass formula, including the dwarf, or little person, Oompa Loompa, whatever, uh, and used that formula and put it on YouTube. That's all he did. Uh, what the difference was he didn't pull as many pranks on his own crew. That was the difference between jackass and, and what Logan does is the jackass made, did some horrible punks. And horrible pranks and horrible dares. And talk about the ultimate truth or dare nightmare. Never do truth and dare with, with Johnny Knoxville. Because he comes up with some of the oh, just horrible stuff. And so his friends were paid to do these dares. And they were they were brutal. You know, you know, going to so far as being like getting shot with rubber bullets from, from riot guns type of stuff. I mean, painful things. I mean, they didn't break a lot of bones, but oof. anyway, so moving on. Uh, let's see, F.E. Mishka, more snails, yep, 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 Mishka was sending me, uh, interesting videos, she's one of our, our hardcore members, and, uh, she had her friend who, who had a toothache or something, so Misha just grabbed a, whatever was frozen out of the freezer to put it on her face, and it was a package of frozen snails, and when her friend found out, hilarity ensued. Even that was funnier than Logan Paul's thing. Uh, let's see, let's, this one's called... Here you get a challenge. Do you dare? Mark, why not just go in an airplane ride like a MiG-29? That's from Ken Thomas. Uh, why? I'm not going to see anything in a MiG-29. I've got I've got uh, balloon footage from uh, 120,000 feet that shows a flat surface. And a MiG-29 doesn't go to 120,000 20, feet. So what's that going to do? This one's called, I just watched your documentary last night and it grabbed hold and wouldn't let go. Uh, Mark, I went to bed but couldn't sleep. Got up and finished watching at 4.30 a.m. Thank you very much. I am now a born-again flat earther, if that's the correct terminology. Help me understand how a sailboat can travel east from Australia or maybe Europe. I'm trying to picture this in my mind, which may be part of my problem. Yeah, yeah grab you got to grab a flat earth map or the closest thing to it anyway is the AE map. Otherwise, just or just grab the UN flag. Uh, that's that's an easier way to gr to do it, and then map it out from there. And got to remember that the compass is going to the North Pole. The magnetic North is going to be in the center of that map, so it's going to work just fine. This one's called Trolgan Paul documentary, and I like by the way the term. I don't know who coined it. Uh, it came out with Trolgan instead of Logan Trolgan. Uh, it doesn't roll off the tongue though, so it's tough to say Trolgan because it's not a real. You know, anyway, uh, this one's called Hi Mark, or that's what it's called. Hi Mark, I just finished watching that abomination of a documentary by Logan Paul, and you were absolutely right about him from the beginning. They should have listened to you. Anyway, that documentary was a huge troll, all caps. You could actually tell from the very beginning of the movie that they weren't even serious, and it was cringy as hell. But I powered through it anyway. Uh, yeah, same here. I literally watched every frame. I guess you could call it taking one for the team. Anyway, I was wondering if you were ever considering watching it yourself. And if so, then what would be your opinion of it? Thanks, Corey. Okay, <clears throat> so my opinion of it was, yeah, it was a monstrous troll. Uh, but even, and it even exceeded my expectations. I knew it was going to be a troll piece because that's all Logan does. Literally, he has never made a serious thing in his life. He, again, what, what would you expect? He's been trolling people ever since he was 10 years old. Uh, he's even, he even recorded the very first prank phone call he did on video where he just got, called people up and Bart Simpson style was pranking people. And then he started putting YouTube, doing YouTube videos along those lines and he started getting paid for it. And that is really is one of the dangerous things about social media, which is we reinforce bad behavior and it's instant. It's instant gratification. So once he was monetized and once he had a marketing company behind him, he was getting rewarded for bigger and bigger pranks to where he was getting paid a lot of money to to troll people. And, and that's all he did. And remember, if you start out doing this when you're 10 years old, 
uh, and and then you start getting paid for it when you're in junior high or high school. I mean, what do you think is going to happen to somebody like that? They are never going to take anything serious ever. And there were no limits to where he was running out of things to, to troll in the United States. And he was going overseas into Europe and doing these elaborate pranks and trolls. And, and then he finally went too far uh, at the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, where he went to uh, Japan, to the suicide forest out there, and was trolling dead people. We, you know, because Japan has a whole different outlook on death than we do. You know, it is there's an, a certain honor in it. If you have any doubt, look at the kamikaze pilots of World War II. Death is is taken very very seriously over there, and they have a forest where, when people reach their lowest points, they go out there and they consider taking their own lives, and some do. And that is just one of those things that that happens out there. And he heard about this. He's like, oh, I I want to go out there and troll dead people. And he did, and he had every chance in the world to back away from that. Every chance in the world for his friends to say, you know what, I don't think this is a great idea. And he uh, he filmed it, he edited it, and he released it. And the media came down on him like a ton of bricks. He, you, there's certain lines you cannot pull back from. And you're, you're wondering why the mainstream media doesn't really talk about him anymore. Of course, there's some celebrity rags that'll talk about him. That's it. That's the reason. And uh, there was... Uh, Anyway, so that's so once he did that, he he took it too far, and he was he's been trying to revive his career ever since, and he was using us, he was coattailing uh, the flat Earth community to do ver that very thing, which was uh, maybe he could use flat Earth to to get back in good graces, and yeah, he got a lot of media attention for it, uh, but that doesn't mean he's you know he's going to keep doing that. He only gets to do that once, and hey, fine, you know what? He actually. In the long run, he helped us more than anything because he generated a lot of attention towards flat Earth and the, the like. The response, the, the filters are back up on YouTube this morning, and there are a ton of reaction videos to his mockumentary. And uh, what's but okay, so sorry. L let me let me continue just a little bit more on this. What surprised me about this mockumentary was that it was it was a troll from the very beginning and it was a complete troll meaning he they i knew he was going to troll it but i thought that at least a sliver of of his staff was neutral or on board because he initially came in and said his best friend mike was a flat earther and even his assistant who go you know walks around and has people sign off on the on on the waivers even his assistant was saying oh yeah you know she was she was in on the troll too and so i can't blame robbie very much for this because it's one thing if one person lies to you right and you know, they're a known troll it's a whole new thing when the entire organization comes at you and says oh no this is totally legit oh yeah, i mean of course they could probably troll it in the end but some of us are actually on the level and no, nobody was on the level. Everybody lied to Robbie, and you know, and was paying him money in doing it, and you know, in in the form of buying tickets. And so they came in, they bought a whole bunch of tickets, and they, you know, by VIP, he spent thousands of dollars to do this, to to do this troll. And you no, know, I wasn't falling for it. Sorry. I mean, in case you're late to this, uh, the second I found out he was in the building, uh, confirmed he was because I did not find out until the night before. But once I confirmed it that very next morning, that's when I left. Uh, I apologized to as many people as I could as I was heading to the airport, but no one was going to stop me. That kid should not have even been in the building with us. Uh, it was bad enough. I mean, and and we let him on stage, which was risky. And we dodged a bullet there because knowing his tactics, I mean, he could have just stripped down you know, naked and just started running around the stage. And we would have had to edit around it, which would have been awful, but he would have con he would have considered it the biggest troll ever. So did he troll me? No, he did not. Uh, and the reason why I left, you know, why'd you leave? And it's like, well, because I didn't want me to, I didn't want my image to be anywhere near his cameras. If his cameras were around, it would have been way too difficult. I wouldn't have known who was his and who was other media. And I wanted to make a statement, which was there are certain things. Uh, there are certain types of behavior. There are certain bad celebrities that shouldn't be allowed anywhere. And he is one of them. Honest to God, I will be happy when something tragic happens to him down the road. He and his brother. I think they're both horrible. Okay, so there you go. Uh, this one's called uh, Floating Glove. Hi, Mark. Could you provide or direct me to the NASA video in which an astronaut's glove falls off while he is floating outside the space station or shuttle? Did you include that footage in your Clues series? Thanks, Anne. No, I didn't include that because I didn't know about it when I was making the Clues series. Uh, so thank you for that, Anne. 
Uh, I don't know which video that is. There's so much content out there that you could destroy NASA on. So the one where the, the guy drops... He's, he's, remember, he's not dropping the glove off his hand. It's not like he has an exposed hand. It was just a, a, a set of gloves that was supposedly uh, you know, clipped on to his uh, suit. And it fell away. Moving on. This one's called, Hey Bro, Just a Quick Voice I Sent Man. Hope you and the family are well, buddy. Tony. And he sent me an audio file. So thank you for that, Tony. I will not play that here. This one's called Good News, Everyone. Logan Paul doesn't actually think the earth is flat. And that's actually the headline. And it's from Mashable. Uh, and yeah, you, you can look this up. There's a ton of, of media, secondary media coverage on this. Which again, just helped us. This one's called Watch Earth the Grand Illusion on YouTube. Mark, I know your email load has doubled since the Netflix uh, release of Behind the Curve, but I like this video and where it comes from in debunking the globe Earth, actually implicating priests. All right, let's see what it's called. It is called Earth the Grand Illusion uh, from a channel called Don't Sphere the Truth. Uh, he's got 15,000 subs, and you know what? I will take a look. Awesome. That's great. This next one is called, thanks for the shout out. Mark, I was surprised and happy for that. Thanks. That's a first for me. Again, I want to thanks for joining uh, us on my birthday. It was short but great. A uh, freaking Facebook man just found this out. Uh, stay, saying you accidentally proved it's a globe. Mainstream fools. I think we need to make another movie that you can say it's yours and, and decide what goes on it as long as the kids are involved. <laughs> Feel free to contact me. Stay flat, my bro. That's from Ori. Yeah. Yeah. Again, the, the Behind the Curve documentary, that, that thing's got legs on it as well. That's going to keep uh, doing more stuff. Uh, this one's called Logan, What a Joke. Mark, hats off to you for correctly pointing out what a fraud Logan is. Back in November, he made a mockery of the Flat Earth 2018 attendees. Very disappointing. I hope Robbie has learned from this. That's from Bob, uh, Bob Turner. And yeah, again, we lucked out. Here's here's the thing. This actually should have been a, a dead giveaway. Other than Robbie, who was a conference promoter, uh, and a little bit on David Weiss, they didn't really talk to the speakers. Uh, as far as I know, Logan didn't even approach them, and he really couldn't because he is so, he, he is, uh, what's the word for not articulate? Uh, maybe I'll just say that. He's, he's, he really does not do well in interviews. And he, again, because... He doesn't have any brain cells because he hasn't been encouraged to learn anything ever since he was in junior high. So he's, what, 24 now? And he talks like he's in eighth grade. So there you have it. Uh, we, we lucked out. We lucked out in the end there. This one's called uh, Earth Knowledge. Good day, Mr. Sergeant. My name is Gavin Flanagan. I would like to research more on the flat. I would like to know, in your opinion, who is the best expert that I can ask questions to? Boy, you know what? As far as well-rounded people that can just tear it up all day long without fail, I think I'd go after uh, David Weiss, otherwise known as D-I-T-R-H, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. That's where I'd go first, if, if I was me. This one's called an art alternative view of Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I'm sending you something that I would like you to read. I liked your documentary, but I can definitely say we have different conclusions to all this strangeness around us. I hope you like it, and in time you come in un to understand what you just read. Best regards, Alumd. Okay, I will check it out. I'll put it in my to-do pile. This one's called Eratosthenes Lecture at a Planetarium. And there's nothing else in the email. It's from Authentic Intent, so thank you for that. I uh, Wait, wait, there is more. One sec just took a while for it to refresh. Uh, hello, my fellow Flat Earth friend. I recorded this yesterday for everyone to see what is being taught to debunk the idea of Flat Earth. That's from Joshua. Thanks, Joshua. This one's called Your Quest for Truth Has Crossed the Pond. Mark, after finding out what you're, about your crusade for truth regarding the fact that the Earth is in fact flat in contrast with everything we have ever been taught, we really respect and value your opinions in the face of lies. As strong followers of the New World Order theory and the new followers of the Flat Earth movement, we are wondering what your opinion is concerning the New World Order. 
In particular, David Icke's view of key political leaders as a reptilian lizard race. Uh, please refer to linked video below. In addition to this, do you have any advice for three budding young flat earthers trying to establish themselves and cement their beliefs in the face of the close-minded, naive British populace? Kind regards, Sarah, uh, Isabel, and Thomas uh, at the University of Sussex. And you know what? I'm going to have to respond to them separately because we just don't have the time to do it here. This one's called Public Personality. Hello, Mark. My name is Julian. I'm a Belgian mathematic teacher. And I've always been petitioned, passioned, passioned. Uh, he's spelling some of this stuff wrong. Passioned in all kinds of sciences. In that sense, I like seeing that you are trying to prove objectively your ideas, but I'm here to tell you that you have to face your conclusions. You cannot run an experiment and let it down if the conclusions don't go to your point. I was very sad seeing your behavior in the Netflix documentary. You look like to be a proud guru. You are also uh, where millions of people are following your ideas. I hope you know you have responsibilities and that you have to face your ideas when your theory will finally sink. Do you know that there are people losing their lives for your community? Do you notice this is more looking like a sect, I think he means religious, than anything else? I hope you will not let your people down when you will eventually lose faith in your theory and that you thought a little about all this possibility. The 12-year-old kid in the documentary almost made me cry. I hope you realize that you are possibly stealing his life. That's all I wanted to tell you. Really? Is that all? Uh, I want you to realize you are a known personality and your acts will affect weak people. This is a seed I hope I planted in your mind. I hope every time you manage to convert someone, you will think about your responsibilities and your future apologies that you would have to make to him. Thanks for reading. Looking forward to seeing you turning around the globe and coming back to your starting point without seeing an ice wall. And that's from J. Hotias. H-O-T-T-I-A-S. Uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about the kids. That's my that's my, my new tagline recently. Uh, you don't you don't have to worry about the children uh, because it's too late. Flat Earth already has the children. As a matter of fact, I wrote back to him and I sent him a link. You can look this up. Just type in Flat Earth Middle School, and it was a link to a middle school that decided to create their own lunchtime Flat Earth Club on their own without any parental or, or teacher supervision. And they recorded it and put it on YouTube, and I put I, I mirrored it on my channel. So yeah, you don't have to worry about the kids. We already got them. But thank you for your concern. This one's called Very Cool Pictures. Uh, Mark, I saw these photos on the internet recently done by a guy named Gonzalo Javier Santilli. A place called Craters News posted them. I thought they were cool because the way he shot the photos of the night sky made it look like he's showing the firmament dome. I think you will really like them. I also wanted to link this curious article about the Milky Way, which I know is not in space. I mention it because in boldface letters at the beginning of the second paragraph, it says grindstone in the firmament. I thought it strange that they would use the word firmament in bold for a science article. Thanks, Stephen Marlowe. Hmm, cool. Moving on. This one's called Quick Question. Hi, Mark. My name is Greg. I recently listened to the podcast on Beyond Reality Radio. Uh, that led to a late night viewing of Behind the Curve, always been interested in the paranormal, and even joined Jason many years ago at his former hotel in the Spalding Inn. I enjoy the process of listening to altern al alternate views and like to always keep an open mind. Driving to work this morning and thinking about the Flat Earth model, I wondered about our seasons. Each year, like clockwork, they come and go and we endure or, or enjoy the process. My understanding for seasons is due to the Earth's revolution around the sun and the fact but this globe is pitched on its axis approximately 22 degrees as it revolves around the sun. Different parts of the earth were exposed for different periods of time as we've been taught. We've also been taught that without the pitch, there would be no seasons. Earth's exposure will be the same day after day all year long. With this in mind and bringing in the flat earth model, uh, what happens to the earth in a fixed position with the sun revolving around us? Uh, how would the seasons on earth be explained? It would seem to me that our exposure would continue to be the same with each cycle as... I stated this is all new to me, so I probably missed some important information regarding this theory. Any feedback would be appreciated. Thank you. Uh, no name. His, his handle is Bass24. <gasps> Excuse me. 2469. Uh, no, uh, the sun wouldn't travel the same path. It'd be like a needle on a record player. So uh, it would be moving in and out slowly but surely. 
uh, on this on this big disc. And so that would create the seasons. Plus, you know, you could always manipulate the temperature and everything from down below. You don't need the sun to be the exclusive heat source for this world. You could also use the uh, underwater conveyor system and the jet stream and the magma system and just about everything else you can think of. There's all sorts of different ways to create weather and seasons in a uh, domed structure. This one's called, thank you, big fan and questions. Mark, thank you for your work. I enjoy your theories and your videos and hope you keep fighting. I like most people came into this trying to laugh at F.E., but I couldn't. Too many red flags were popping up, and it doesn't add up. The authorities know something. That's for damn sure. I watched the Netflix documentary. I hope you noticed it was a si it was a slide of hand. You mean sleight of hand. Uh, jab at you and this movement, but hell, if it wakes more people up, then I guess it's worth it to us. I'm not sold on the flat earth idea yet, for I am a realist. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised either way. The thing that keeps me open to the idea is what you kept saying are the plot holes, the missing links. If it were a globe, then there would be no hesitation, no sleight of hand to hide it. They would have been able to shut this theory down in a nanosecond. But things don't add up. Not everything, but there are big enough gaps for people like me to question it. Um, there are two quandaries I have. Everybody's got a quandary. Number one, with the laser gyro, if it can read a 15 degree offset, then they must account for its for that in its design, right? Yeah. Well, something's moving 15 degrees. No question. The question is, is, is it the sky or is it the ground? We say it's the sky. Then how does it compensate for that in flight? Absolutely right. It doesn't. Again, things don't add up. The second and biggest thing for me is believing wholeheartedly is the sun. How can it be big enough to heat us during the summer, but not be able to be seen as it crosses to the other side of the plane at night? A candle can be seen from miles of the distance, but no sun. Thanks for all your work. Keep digging. I will let you know. Peter Geib. Um, P.S. Total BS that when you do a YouTube search for Flat Earth, all you get is debunking videos. You have to dig deep to find a video in support of it. Well, the filters work now. So you don't have to you don't have to sweat that. The filters are working as of this morning. Hopefully they won't break again or be broken deliberately. As far as the sun goes, you gotta remember, if the sun is really, really tiny, it can go off into the distance and you combine that with the atmosphere, which is again a thin version of water, and it can disappear. Absolutely it can. It, it doesn't even if the sun was fifty miles wide. Remember, a plane going off the distance uh, disappears fairly quickly. So the sun is just a giant object in the sky. Yeah, it's got a light on it, but it can disappear. Can be done. Moving on. Uh, how many more can we do here? We can do a few more. Uh, this one's called Robbie Got Played. Mark, well, you always say you don't want to be rich. You just want to be right. Well, you were right. It's too bad for everybody at the FEIC 2018. Didn't have your immediate gut reaction. Uh, if there's any silver lining there, do you think it'll drive home some of the 1.9 million views uh, of his? I think it's up to 3 million now. Uh, to do their own research. Keep it flat, DJ. Yes, it's absolutely going to be a pro for Flat Earth in the end because Logan Paul just gave us a whole bunch more publicity. Uh, with a younger demographic so it absolutely will work and as far as you know me trying to convince other people i, I absolutely tried to uh try to get everybody you know along board i i you probably heard me say that i worked on some of the speakers for an hour the night before i left and uh the the key was there's no, nobody knew who he was it'd be different if they knew who he was then they might have some sort of opinion but i'm i'm ranting on because i was one of the only people that actually had done research on him before I got to the conference, meaning uh, I, I look at a lot of different people. I look at PewDiePie and DeFranco and, uh, you know, his brother. I actually learned about Logan through his brother, Jake. And then I learned about Logan and found out all the bad stuff he was into. And that's that's how I knew. So I knew months ahead of time. But again, if you don't know, you don't know. And so it wasn't, it wasn't resonating with anybody. So I don't blame him. Uh, but I wasn't going to stay around. Uh, this one's called Space Ch Shuttle Challenger. What went wrong on YouTube? All right, I will take a look at that. Thank you for the link. Um, we'll probably end on a uh, troll email because I like those. There's there's some fun ones. Uh, let's read one more. Uh, this one's called Watch uh, Live NASA Spacewalk Outside the International Space Station Exp Expedition 59 at 8.05 Eastern Time on YouTube. Uh, yep, yeah, more NASA reinforcement. Come on, there's got to be something better than that. Uh, this one's called Flatter Shock Conspiracist Ready to End Argument Once and For All with New Evidence. Oh, please tell me I'm not in this. And it's from a UK article, The Express Conspiracist. And yep, there I am. Yep, I wish they would have told me what evidence I'm going to bring to the table. Uh, come on, let's find one more. 
Uh, nah, let's, you know what, let's go to the, let's go to the troll, the troll one, then we'll pick up on the other one where, where we left off. Uh, okay, so I got a troll email this morning, and uh, I, I don't get a lot of troll emails, because uh, trolls generally won't bother spoofing an email address. So, let's read this one. It's called Flatter Theory, uh, and it's from a guy named Jagger Wicker, W-I-C-K-E-R, uh, and I, I guarantee that's not him. Hello, my name is Jagger. I am an el elementary student from Gramville, Michigan. I am so unbelievably dumbfounded as to how you have succeeded in life, and I was wondering why you simply ignore evidence for a spherical Earth. The laser gyro shows the 15-degree tilt every hour, uh, and you seem to ignore that fact along with the moons of Jupiter. Uh, show these facts as ir are irrelevant or false, and I will believe we live on a flying pancake, or you just tell me what actual observable, observable evidence you would need in order to falsify your consensus that the Earth is flat. Be talking with you soon, and signs it nothing. I, I don't know why. Okay, a couple things here. If you're going to write me a troll email, remember, I, I watch a lot of media. I know a lot of plot lines. Uh, there's a couple things that you could have done better here. First off, um, saying that you're an elementary student from Granville, Michigan, is a bad opener because everything after that has to be consistent with an elementary student. And by that, I would mean, I, I'm guessing pro, junior high starts usually at seventh grade, so we're talking sixth grade or less. Uh, no sixth grader I have ever met ever in my life uses the term unbelievably dumbfounded. That concept has no no place in their vocabulary whatsoever. So that's a lie. Uh, and then followed immediately by how you have succeeded in life. Uh, find me a sixth grader that cares about anybody uh, succeeding in life. All, all you care about when you're in sixth grade is candy. You don't even like girls yet, usually, by the time you're in sixth grade. Well, at least I didn't. I mean, I like them, but you didn't know what to do with them. Uh, so having ask, asking for a measurement on success in life, and and how does he even know that I succeeded in life? Uh, let's see, ignoring evidence for a spherical Earth. A sixth grader is not going to use the term spherical. They're going to use the term round. Uh, the laser gyro, which means he watched the documentary. Uh, shows the 15 degree tilt every hour, but I ignore that fact along with the moons of Jupiter. How is that even? How did that even get brought in? The the moons of Jupiter. I've never made a video about the, the moons of Jupiter at all. Um, show these facts as irrelevant. They're not going to use that term. Uh, live on a flying pancake. Never mention that. Uh, and then, uh, then again, or you just tell me what actual observable evidence. No sixth grader is ever going to use any of these concepts. There, this argument doesn't even exist. So I, I don't know what you, what you want me to say here. I, I, I guarantee he's probably not listening to my, my emails. Uh, I'm not going to write back to him, but every once in a while I'll get troll emails like this and, and they just amuse me because uh, they're just they're just lashing out. The point is, is I'm in his head. Uh, Flat Earth is in his head and he doesn't know what to do with it, so he is lashing out. This is the denial stage followed immediately by anger, which is how, you know, how can you, how can you say it, it's flat when it's obviously a globe and his arguments are terrible? And plus he's using our own documentary, which is the power of editing. So there you have it troll email uh send send some more to me if you get a chance i don't get enough honestly i enjoy troll emails more than i do uh just general flat earth emails because it lets me know if you're angry enough to to come at me that means that that i'm doing i'm doing my job all right that's it let's wrap this thing up I'll put a bow on it so uh thanks to everybody that wrote me emails remember you can send your emails to uh msargent23 at comcast.net that's m-s-a-r-g-e-n-t 23 at comcast.net and until next time guys stay flat